Hi everybody. I wanted to talk about inflammation today. This is a really crucial subject, one that it's, it's so important and it really could be the underlying cause and really where the root or the beginning of everything be started for you to head you down the path to hypothyroidism. So inflammation, what is it? Let's start off with defining what this is. Inflammation is the body's immune response to something negative, internal or external to the body. So let's say you get injured. Let's say you step on a nail or poke your finger and you're bleeding. Um, the, in, in, the immune system um, comes to the rescue. And basically you'll see it begin to swell. You'll see it turn red. That process is the immune system actually coming to the rescue and trying to heal the body. That is exactly what we need to happen. We actually have to have inflammation. It's actually very important to our healing process. It's what allows our body to heal. So when, when we see that red, we see that swelling and, you know, everything's coming together and, and, and healing itself, that is exactly what's supposed to happen. And that's um, the immune system doing its job. That is acute inflammation when it happens outside the body and we're seeing that process heal. The problem is we can also have internal inflammation and internal inflammation is caused by um, an initial source. It could be something that you ingested that the body doesn't like, um, something that it thinks it's an invader, um, and it starts somewhere. Generally, it starts with other sources. It could be stress. It could be GMOs from your food. It could be something that you're just simply sensitive to. When it happens inside the body like that, that is called chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation builds and builds and builds over time if we don't get rid of the source and it turns into much bigger issues. It turns into weight gain. It turns into fatigue. It turns into digestive upset. Um, it turns into skin issues, dry skin, itchy skin. It turns into depression. Um, it turns into puffy and you know waking up overnight feeling like you gained two or three pounds out of nowhere. These are all signs of inflammation and they sound familiar, right? Um, so the science for hypothyroidism and the science for inflammation actually kind of go hand in hand. Um, so if you've ever felt that time where you've gone to bed, you wake up, suddenly you feel bloated, suddenly you feel puffy, suddenly your aches and pain, your joints are achy, suddenly you feel like you've gained a few inches in your belly and you're thinking, what on earth did I do? I didn't overeat yesterday. I'm exercising. I'm not even eating very much. These are signs of inflammation. And here's the big problem. As inflammation builds and builds and builds over time, because if you don't get rid of the underlying problem, it will continue. And inflammation will grow and it will grow and it will grow and it will lead to bigger issues, including autoimmune diseases. So Hashimoto's or even just simple, simply a sluggish thyroid, which would be hypothyroidism. So as this builds over time and as things continue to get worse, the body and the immune system begins to become desensitized to what is coming inside your body. Um, it, it happens over and over and over and over again. And if it happens, starts happening too much, the immune system can't recognize what a real invader is and what is not. So now what something that you were perfectly fine with six months ago, you might be eating now and the body's thinking, oh, that's an invader. I need to attack it. I need to get rid of it and get it out of the body. So it's going to start attacking that as well. This continues to build and build and build. And suddenly you become more and more sensitive to more and more foods. The bigger issue that we have here is that not only is it attacking within your body what it thinks is an invader, it will begin attacking tissue and organs with your body as well, which leads to more and more autoimmune diseases. So for example, you may start off with, let's say um, gluten was never an issue for you. And gluten is the protein part of the grain that is found in wheat. It's called gliadin. And this protein, you know, as you begin to have a little bit of inflammation in your body, you, you may already be sensitive to gliadin. Many of us are. It's actually a really, really common sensitivity. And we're told to eat grains all the time. And wheat is really good for you. Always get 100% wheat. The problem is this is not a requirement in our diet in any way, shape, or form. Grains are not bad for you. They're, they're good for you. However, within the body, 
they can cause a lot of sensitivities and a lot of people it's a really really common thing to actually be sensitive to that particular um, type of protein found in wheat so that is why gluten is such a big issue for us because it's a really common trigger so that's why we need to get gluten out of the body so in addition to that as we eat gluten we're taking it in and maybe initially it's not so bad maybe initially everything's fine you don't notice a difference everything's okay it's like I'm not allergic to gluten but remove it from your body allow things to settle down allow your immune system to actually come back on track and you will notice that your inflammation will settle down and it might not be just gluten it could be a number of different things and like I said these things build and build and build over time but here's the thing about gluten the gluten on a molecular level actually looks like your thyroid. Um, it's very, very similar. So within the body, if you are eating gluten all the time, you have a heavy gluten diet, which most of us did and do in the past, um, you know, we're eating it all the time and suddenly your body begins to attack gluten because it thinks in its invader. There's, there's a sensitivity there. It begins to attack gluten. Well, because your thyroid looks similar to gluten, now your thyroid is going to go under attack. And when your thyroid goes under attack, that's Hashimoto's. That is leading to an autoimmune disease. So you don't recognize this. You don't know this is what's happening. And all of a sudden, you're diagnosed with hypothyroidism because your thyroid is slowing down. Well, there's nothing wrong with your thyroid, at least as of yet. The problem is this outside invader that's coming in and slowing down your thyroid, attacking it, or causing it to actually slow down. So as this happens over and over and over again, you think, okay, I have hypothyroidism. You begin to take medication, but you don't solve the problem by removing gluten from your diet. The inflammation continues. The inflammation begins to build and build and build more and more and more. Guess what happens? Bigger autoimmune and more autoimmune diseases continue to grow. You um, now become more inflamed. Your muscle joints begin to ache. You may begin getting arthritis. Um, you uh, feel puffier and puffier uh, it's gonna lead to bigger fatigue because um, your brain can actually swell which um, leads to more and more fatigue um, your skin gets more and more dry leading to you know bigger issues with with your your dry patchy skin and eczema um, you continue to gain weight um, because you know that you're gonna start uh, storing belly fat your um, digestive system, um, if your gut begins to swell from this inflammation, you now start to develop gut issues. And gut issues are also another issue for your thyroid. So as your gut begins to become inflamed, you're going to stop absorbing certain nutrients. Um, and your body's going to think you're going into starvation mode because it's not getting what it needs. Again, you're going to store more and more belly fat. So you can see it's kind of a nasty, nasty cycle that just continues on and on and on. So how do we solve this problem? We need to reduce and get rid of inflammation. We need to allow our immune system to slow down, take a step back and say, whoa, okay, finally, we've gotten rid of all the triggers, we've gotten rid of all the invaders, and we're doing what we're supposed to do. So when we get those things out of our diet, and in a lot of cases it's temporary, um, so we get those things out of our diet and, you know, you can eliminate for starting two weeks and see how you feel three weeks, four weeks, five weeks um, to get these things out of your diet. Let your immune system calm down and let things kind of happen naturally. And you will notice that the puffiness and that the bloating and that the aches and pains and the fatigue and all these different things are going to begin to lift and they're going to begin to go away. So now what do we do? We need to continue forward with an anti-inflammatory diet. So first let's start, talk quickly about the foods that cause inflammation. Foods that cause inflammation are things that cause inflammation, um, GMOs. Um, so anything like pesticides and those types of things that are in your food, like corn. Unfortunately, corn is pretty much always GMO. So that's the bad thing about corn. Um, so GMO items, you've got gluten I've already mentioned, um, stress is an issue. Dairy can be an issue for many people and a lot of people find that you know long time ago They were fine with dairy dairy never bothered them at all, but suddenly now they're sensitive to dairy There's a reason behind it and it's because that inflammation has built over and over and over again So dairy is a common trigger Eggs can be a common trigger for some people and I, eggs are naturally anti-inflammatory But those are a protein that actually some people are very sensitive to so eggs can be an issue for some um, sugar uh, refined sugar, 
just sugar in general, too much sugar, um, spiking your insulin and, you know, causing those types of issues. Sugar is a problem um, for inflammation, um, artificial ingredients and your bad carbs. So that's kind of a good list of, of different things. And I have another list for you as well that has, you know, more foods on there that are inflammatory as well. But obviously your processed foods, anything in a box um, that's not a real ingredient, those are all going to be inflammatory as well. So what are we going to do to get rid of this? Well, we need to start working towards an anti-inflammatory diet. We need to get these foods, and some of them are personal triggers. And that's the thing. We've got to basically go in and eliminate every common food. So start. I, I recommend starting with um, gluten, soy, and maybe even dairy. That's kind of like the trifecta. That is a beautiful trifecta to begin with because you don't need to overwhelm yourself and basically, you know, eat a piece of chicken and lettuce every day. <laughs> that is not the, that's not the idea behind here. You just need to start somewhere. And if you aren't sure where to start, the trifecta is beautiful. And if that is too much, start with gluten. Gluten is the big one. So get that out of your diet, begin there, and then build from it. So if you can do the trifecta, that is what I consider the trifecta. You can do gluten, soy, and dairy. Those are the three big ones. Um, and what we need to do is start implementing foods that are anti-inflammatory. Turmeric and ginger are wonderful. They are really great anti-inflammatory agents. Um, healthy fish, you've got tuna and salmon. Those are wonderful also for anti-inflammatory. Obviously your vegetables. Um, some people are more sensitive to nightshades. Um, nightshades are going to be like your peppers and eggplant, that type of thing. Some people are very sensitive to nightshades, so you can eliminate those and implement more of your dark leafy greens because your dark leafy greens are very great by themselves for an anti-inflammatory agent. Um, apple cider vinegar, you can implement that into your daily regimen. You can have it every morning and a, a drink, um, add some lemon juice, add some ginger to it. It is a wonder, wonderful morning anti-inflammatory drink. You can have a little bit before you eat, especially if you're going to be eating carbs or something starchy. It really helps with that digestion of carbs. Um, so apple cider vinegar is wonderful. Your healthier oils, avocado oil, and olive oil. These are the two best that you can possibly have that really help with digestion, that really help kind of bring down the inflammation. Um, so I think I've covered everything on the inflammatory front that I wanna talk about, um, but this is really where everything needs to begin. And this is what we're going to um, try to work on throughout the entire journey. This is kind of the ultimate deep rooted goal. It builds from here. Certain foods will build from here. Certain triggers will build from here. What to look for will build from here. But you will notice by yourself if you really start to look and concentrate on your inflammation and specific foods that are an issue for you, you will begin to feel better. And that is the ultimate goal. So on to the next one. Have a great day, guys.